This is Becca from Willow Hill Designs. Welcome to my channel. And today I'll be doing a video on my quilting studio and um, just sharing a few of the ways that I like to store things and organize things. As you come into my studio, to the left of the door, there's an area. And as you go to the, and here, there's a desk over here. This is the, um, this is the area where I, I do designing or drawing. And to the right of the doorway is the main part of the room. And that's where I do sewing and cutting and everything. And I'll just give you a quick overview before I go into things. Hopefully I'm not making anyone dizzy. Okay. Okay. So the first thing that you see when you come in my studio is my hutch. And I love this hutch. This is my mother's hutch top, which I painted white to match this cabinet under here. And uh, this holds some of the things that I find very special. And I think it's just so nice to walk in and see all of these things. Um, over here is a little basket. And in this basket, I have my mother's knitting needles. I have my grandmother's doll, my mother's darning tool. And uh, this is a, a doily that my mother crocheted. And this is a pillow, a uh, ring bearer's pillow that I made for my daughter's wedding. Uh, and that satin in this pillow is my grandmother's satin. And I still have um, some yardage of that. That was hers. So that's very special. And then I just have some other little odds and ends in there that I love to look at. Uh, this is a favorite bunny of mine. I've had him for a long time. He has a little basket on his back. And I keep a, uh, a beautiful lace doily in there. And um, one of my hand felted cushions, pin cushions that has just begun. My sister's journal that she made for me that I love here. And this is some Tilda fabric collection that I think is very pretty. It's called Pie in the Sky. And this little bowl is from my daughter, and I love all these ribbons cascading out of it. That's a Beatrix Potter's little Peter Rabbit there. And I have in here my French seam binding and some silk ribbons, and I, I just love them kind of cascading out of there. This uh, scale is from when I was a baby. So my baby scale is in here. I believe my brothers and sister were also weighed on that scale. This is some more of the Pie in the Sky collection, and those are Tilda fabrics. And on the scale is a doily that my mom made, and this little um, Brambley Hedge container that um, my son and daughter-in-law bought for my birthday. So that's very special. And oh, and over here in this basket, uh, this is a um, hanky that my, my daughter-in-law to be gave me when her and my son were getting married. So those are special things. And over here, um, of course, I love the Brambley Hedge, anything to do with Brambley Hedge. And in here are some ribbons that I store. I store my um, my DMC um, or Valdani 
uh, threads in there and and I put a little five on here I I made it so that I could see it so that I knew that those were number five pearl cotton in there I know that there's ribbons in that and um, this is a um, a little tin of lavender candies from my friend Jill and um, I think it just looks so pretty under the um, Brambley Hedge Mouse. This is Beatrix Potter. And uh, that's a little music box that plays It's a Small World. These little tins back here and here are from my children from a field trip. And those are Beatrix Potter as well. They're beautiful. Mrs. Tiggy Winkle, Peter Rabbit. These are also part of my uh, Brambley Hedge little mice collection that I love and some beautiful fabrics that will make a very pretty log cabin quilt one of these days and I painted the back of this quilt of uh, this hutch um, it's like a duck egg blue and it's just such a pretty color I, I love it it's very peaceful and, and beautiful and up here um, another storage box for Right now there are some dried orchids in there, but you can really store anything in there. And the little box above that has um, number eight, uh, I'm sorry, number 12 pearl cotton threads. And I love to use decorative boxes um, or little round containers, anything that looks pretty to store things. And that way you, you know, your eye, it's just so restful to look at everything and it looks so pretty. This um, Cinderella up here is from my 10th birthday and she had a, a watch around her base. And uh, so I love that, that's very special. A Brambley Hedge plate and I have all the seasons. That's spring. I should really change that out for summer because we're just about there. This is a teapot from my friend Jill and another one of those little tins. And um, those are my Beatrix Potter books that I love, a whole collection my husband bought for me. And those two spools of thread are my grandmother's and um, one has Jemima Puddle Duck on it. And the other one has a, a um, I call him a bead buddy that I made. I felted his body and then just put a, a little wooden head and some beads for his arms and legs and a button for a hat. And those shaker containers there also um, contain threads, wool threads and uh, pearl cotton threads and some heavy uh, 12 weight threads that I use for um, pin cushion making. There's one of my first pin cushions up there. I used to make uh, lots of wet felted pin cushions. And up on top is a fairy there to the left. Two sewing machines, two toy sewing machines. Uh, the one on the left I bought, the one on the right my son bought for me. And um, that's an elephant bank that my father bought for me. And um, when you put a, a coin in his trunk, and then push the little button down behind his, I guess that would be like a little saddle or seat. It goes into the bank. And that's an angel that I painted uh, quite a long time ago. But I thought she looks pretty in here. So she sits up there. So this is one of the nice things that I see when I walk in. And um, I love to see all these things. And over here, coming around to the left of the hutch, is uh, my desk area. Ooh, I'm getting in the <laughs> video. There's my desk area. And uh, this is a desk for writing and just keeping some things that I need to keep handy. And this top comes down. The, there are elements that uh, pull out. There are these bars that pull out. And then the desktop just lays right on there and it's very nice and sturdy surface for writing or working. And um, I've had this desk a long time. 
It was actually an unfinished piece of furniture. It used to be a colonial blue, and I painted it white and did some rub-on paint transfers on it. Uh, the things on my desk that I love to look at are these um, fabric journals. There are two of them there that I love. I love this light. This is a very pretty light, especially at night when the crystals are lit and it makes patterns on the wall. That's a thread book from my sister that she made for me. And um, these are two of my mother's pins in here in this little snail bowl. And I just love looking at that as well. This is kind of my corner for pretty things. Some little birds and um, a peony and a pink vase. I love the color pink. So that to me is just a beautiful touch there. And this mirror, um, I painted this. This was a dark brown with gold, sort of gold or coppery berries on it. And um, I painted it, just gave it sort of a whitewashed look. And I painted the berries sort of a rosy colored tones and greens and a little bit of gold on them. And I just like the way that that looks. I think that that really adds such a nice look to that corner. And then over here, as you come around to the left of the hutch, uh, there are shelves tucked away here. And um, again, I use decorative boxes to store different fabric collections. This has Joanne Figueroa. This has some batiks in there for a quilt that I've designed. And um, these are all beautiful boxes in here. These have uh, like pastel pieces, neutral squares, brights for string piecing, wool, um, just different things. This has patterns that I used to sell. And um, I just love the look of them. They're such beautiful boxes and you have all these wonderful things contained in these beautiful boxes and it doesn't look um doesn't distract the eye it looks pretty and i like that i i can't work in chaos <laughs> i just can't work in chaos so it's nice for me to have things um organized and in pretty containers i and then i can come in here and it feels peaceful and I can relax when working. This is some overflow of my fabric. These are large browns and these are some large pieces of green, some large and some small pieces of greens. Um, there's some little hand sewn uh, blocks from probably, well, I would say they're feed sack fabric, so probably the early 1900s and they're all hand stitched. I'd like to do something with those one of these days. Uh, I wasn't quite sure where to put these so these ended up here in my greens. Um, let's see and this is a rolling cart that just rolls right out of here and down there are some quilts and some extra containers for fabric, which hopefully I won't use because I have too much fabric now as it is. <laughs> I will never live long enough to use it all. And um, this cart is really, I love this because I save all of the scraps and the cuttings from whatever I'm working on. The little off cuts that, you know, you would think, what, what should I do with that? but you don't really want to throw them out. So I save these for small blocks that I might be making, and I'll, I'll show you some of the small blocks that I use them for when we get to that side of the room. But, um, and they're all organized by color. There's, and I just put little fabric tags on them so that I know what colors go in each box. Each little container that's gray and ivory and black and white. And um, they're just easily removable. 
if I want to um, take them over to my sewing machine, if I want some oranges and yellows, I'll take that over. If I want some of the pinks and reds, I just take that over. I have um, a larger box upstairs that I have to actually go through and finish sorting and putting into these. But again, it, it's portable. It rolls easily to my sewing machine. <clears throat> Excuse me, and over so that I can sew using those colors. Over here is a mirror. And um, this mirror was my parents' mirror, actually, in their house. And um, I love the depth that it gives the room. It really um, reflects light. And it also, when you're standing at the other end, it makes the room feel even bigger. It looks like you're looking through to another room. And... Uh, Oh, well, I'll just show you what's over to the right of the mirror. Here is a little um, sort of a picture, I guess, that my daughter had made for me. It's a heart with flowers shaped in a heart. And um, I don't know if you can read that. It says Nani on there. And my little grandchildren's names, Mia and Easton. Those are her children. And I love that. These are some tags from a woman that I always bought my wool from, the Mary Hooker. And I, I love the tags that she would always include in my orders. So I hang those here. And I made this little wool heart that I used to have a um, pin cushion in there, but I took it out. And um, I love to hang dried flowers as well. And up there on that board, I have... a some pip berry garland in white love the white and way up there i have a, a kind of a crystally branch branch with crystals on it and i love love that love the way that that looks and coming around to the left side of the mirror i have more tags hanging of these as well from uh, the Mary Hooker and she put all her tags on raffia. This is just a little bag that I would keep on my cross stitch stand for when I'm cross stitching. And this is my desk area where I draw, uh, where I draw patterns and um, get my inspiration, use my light box. On this chair, at my desk is a quilt that I made. If I can get this, oh, that's not easy with one hand. Um, this is a quilt that I made. Um, I had drawn the design up and wanted it in blacks and whites and colors. Very colorful. It, for some reason, it makes me think of something French, but I don't know. It's appliqued a lot of it. And um, the applique on it is outlined in black embroidery floss. Used a lot of different techniques in this. And it's a basket quilt. It's a quilt of all baskets. And uh, this is the center basket. I, I won't unfold it, but that's the center basket on there. Lots of different flowers and bird vines, birds on vines, and then this wonderful kind of um, sort of a scallop triangle shape around the outside. So I love that quilt. That sits on my chair, and here is my light box that I use for drawing patterns. And in that mason jar right there with the white paper is a pattern for a quilt that I'm um, making in memory of my mother, one of the quilts that I drew up for her, one of my pin cushions. And I keep my um, paintbrushes here and my ink applicators. Um, that's my brother's little um, drawing figure that you use to pose and, and when you're drawing figures. 
my husband and my husband and I. And in those cups are uh, my tools for collaging with paper. And the other one has my black wing pencils in it. And um, those are cups that I got from Quilt Makers Magazine when I had a block in there, 100 block issues. And up above is my design wall. And um, these are just some ideas for quilts that I have. Some quilts that I'd like to make. And my inspiration, I love that squirrel. My inspiration here, I'd like to make that round uh, design into a looking like a slice of wood. Um, so that kind of inspires me there. This is my light, which um, I have lots of light here in the evening. And those are my children there when they were little and when they were grown up. And um, again, I like to store things in pretty containers so that they are, um, it looks nice and it's neat. In this box, I just keep my stamp alphabet stamps, which is nice and easy and contains everything. And in here are my um, oxide inks, which again, um, that's part of my reason for doing this video. In a sense, it's, um, sorry, doing this one-handedly is not easy. And um, it's just to show that, uh, and of course, I'm sure that lots of people know this, but when you have things in pretty containers, they're handy, they're easy to get at. Um, it looks pretty. There's nothing to distract you when you're trying to concentrate on a design or, um, I love that. And there's my little Jacques from Cinderella. <laughs> And a picture of my mom. I think she was 90 in that picture. So coming around here on the back of the door, I keep my applique folio. And this was a pattern that I had designed to keep um, anything up to a 12-inch block when you're appliqueing. And it, it makes it portable. You can put your threads in there. Um, scissors, anything. It, it's really very handy. So I keep that there for if you're in the car, if you're traveling or visiting someone, you can do your projects easily. So I'll just shut the door there. Coming around as you come into the door on the right is a sleigh shelf. And uh, I painted that white. And on there I keep my Franklin Mint Beatrix Potter thimbles, which I love. <laughs> Again, I forgot how many there were in total. That was like a year's collecting. So I keep them there and have a pretty uh, silk heart there, a Dupioni silk heart. And I love that. Again, um, I think just taking advantage of pretty things in your space. It, it just makes it truly a happy place to be in. Um, that's my design wall up ahead there. But coming around this way is where I keep most of my fabrics, I would say. Let me just zoom out a bit. And um, <clears throat> I have them all organized by color so that it makes it very easy for me to um, get the fabric colors that I'm looking for. So in here we have greens in both of these baskets and um, more greens and pinks, purples up here, pinks and reds here, and uh, these doilies. These are plastic doilies that were given to me by our doctor's wife. She and I were good friends and um, she gave me those years ago and I, I love using them 
in these baskets. I think they look pretty. Up there in the top, I store some quilts and a Lori Holt tin where I put um, all the different cut pieces for whatever project I'm working on that comes in handy. And so down here, I have um, my Orifil threads that I keep handy. And those are some Liberty of London fabrics. I don't have many, but I love what I have. And again, another very pretty box that I love. And in there, I just put fabrics um, that I think are very pretty. I don't know if I can do this here. Um, groupings of fabrics. And also a triangle on a roll papers. Some fusibles are in there. And um, my goddess pressing sheet. So the, again, those are all things that are contained in these pretty containers. I know where they are, and um, it, it's just nice to look at. It's not a lot of chaos in the room. And down here, I store ribbons in that box. And in this box, um, I have some wool threads and some more fabric pieces in that. These are pieces for landscape fabrics that I keep handy and um, there's storage on the sides so I can keep some iron-on batting there to the side and over here I store my large um, graph paper pads and also the uh, shape cutting rulers the larger rulers I keep there so that, that's very nice. That works out. Any little nook or cranny I have used and utilized in this space. Um, again, more fabric separated by color and um, blues, blues, browns, oranges and golds, oranges up there. And these containers I got at uh, Target and um, they're not expensive and it really works out nicely because you can take a container out and take it over to your workspace and pull what you need and then put the containers back up on the top uh, the basket has collections in it of fabrics and then in those containers i have sets of fabrics and then lace up there and that one and again it just makes it so easy to take it down and then choose whatever lace I'd like to use so again organizing and putting things in pretty containers for me um, just makes my space a nice place to come and work and I just put some birds and flowers with little fairies on the wall there. I think that's very pretty. And um, requirements in here are, it has to be pretty to be in here. <laughs> so um, this is my sewing table here. And um, right now I have a some quilt blocks on here that I'm making a quilt for my grandson, so those are ready to go. And here's my machine. And uh, my husband made me this little glass box for my pins. So I keep those in there and my wonder clips. And again, these are handy and um, just like to have everything organized and also write. These are leaders and enders that I just little off cuts from the ends of fabrics and they're nice to start and stop your thread um, seams your seams on your blocks these are all little tools that I keep handy a paintbrush just in case if I'm using a fabric medium to tint a fabric um, brush to clean my sewing machine out my stilettos purple thang <laughs> a porcupine quill comes in handy 
couple of pin cushions and um, I keep tweezers in here and the, the feet on my sewing machine that I change out um, often. And this is a magnetized dish, so it's nice. I don't have to worry about them falling out the tweezers the same way. Coming around uh, from my sewing machine is this little um, shelf cart. And um, I keep all my scissors here. These are also very handy when I'm working. Um, it's nice to, to have everything close by that's efficient so that you can you don't have to stop and look for things that you need. And these are my clappers that I keep here for seams. Um, again, right next to my ironing surface here. And down there I store some water, some starch, another one of those cups from Quilt Makers Magazine for the 100 block issue. And I keep Frixion pens in there, some Micron pens, and um, just some assorted other little things that I use there, some fusibles and little pieces of fabric. Um, here are the little tiny quilt blocks that I make. When I use those fabric scraps that I showed you on the rolling cart and um, just all the little pieces that you might throw out. I like to save them and make little blocks. These are four inch blocks. These are on um, muslin squares that I passed out at my daughter's wedding with um, a micron pen for everyone to leave a sentiment and then I put them all together for them in a uh, quilt. So these are just some of the little pieces that I would use. Little fabric scraps that you might just throw out. Kind of done in a crazy quilt fashion. But um, why, why throw fabric out? Why waste it? I, I mean, I don't really need to save more fabric. I have enough. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, it makes nice, pretty little blocks. So this will be a, a little quilt that'll be 10, 10 blocks wide by 10 blocks long when I finish it. So again, not wasting any of these fabrics. All those little scraps can be put to use. And also down here to the side of my sewing machine is a little basket that hangs and I use that to put threads in or little pieces of fabric when I'm clipping from a seam. Over here is my pressing station. And um, this is a, a board that my husband made. And I um, have my cup of coffee in here. And um, I just covered this with some batting and a very pretty fabric. Again, I love pink. <laughs> and I keep my wool pressing mat on here, and it keeps my um, the fabric on my pressing board from getting all brown and scorched at times. And um, it's also nice for pressing because the wool absorbs the steam, and um, it really does give you a flatter block. My Rowenta, I love that. Under here is more storage space. Um, that's when I was making project bags for Etsy. Um, I put this pressing board on legs and those legs are adjustable. They can go up or down. And um, that gave me storage space under here. Um, in this cabinet here is more fabric. And I store this, these are neutrals in here, some shirt fabrics that I've deconstructed and um, more neutrals. And I will even use shoe boxes uh, to store. These are out of sight, so they don't really have to be pretty. But um, again, it really does help to keep everything organized and um, just kind of uh, easy to get at, easy to access. So that is my pressing station, and that's where I uh, put my, either if I'm filming with an iPad or my phone, those are my two stands for that. 
coming around, this is my cutting table here. That's opposite of my uh, sewing machine so that I can just spin around and cut if I have to or not, or trim something up. And over here, um, again, I like to keep everything organized. These are some little ceramic milk bottles that my daughter bought, and they're perfect for holding um, scissors. And this little caddy I had painted. I had painted and um, put these die cuts on them, on the caddy, and I... I love it again, pretty in your space. It just makes everything so much nicer. And I store my uh, some of my scissors back there. In this caddy, I keep my rotary cutters and my bias pressing bars, and also back there my um, mechanical pencils. I also, in this little container my daughter bought for me, which I think is beautiful, um, keep my pliers, all sorts of pliers, needle nose, clipping pliers uh, for charms and things. In these boxes underneath are charms, and those are just in magnetic boxes, and I have them labeled so that, oh, I have them labeled so that I know um, if I need keys, they're in there, and I can just glance at the side and see what's in there. So again, very handy, and um, I, I like keeping the space looking uncluttered. This is part of that quilt that I'm making for my grandson. Um, over here are some roller, rulers that I keep handy and a little basket for um, offcuts or any little scraps that need to be thrown in there. And more rulers. Uh, these, this, um, whoop, sorry about my fingers. Uh, this is a container that I got at uh, Hobby Lobby, and I keep some rulers in there that I use um, often, just like these. And up here, um, I like to keep my threads organized. These are jewelry boxes, jewelry containers, I guess I should say, jewelry drawers. And I just labeled them with the colors so that when I need a color of thread, it's just so easy for me to come and see what I... And just in this is a 50 weight thread. There's um, nothing bigger than 50 weight thread or smaller in those. And um, up here are some things that I used when mailing things out. This basket I keep here for current projects with the fabrics that I'm working on. So this will be the backing for my grandson's quilt. And just some pretty ribbons on there. Again, just I love to make the space pretty. My granddaughter made this for me. And um, making the space look pretty. Um, down here I have boxes with things that I like to keep organized. Another very pretty box, like the one that's in the other cabinet. That houses electronics for my laptop and um, just different things in here, this and that. Charm squares, um, this has some note cards. Miss Lucy's Cottage. Again, organizing things and it, it looks pretty, I think. And these are just simple photo boxes that you can buy in Joann's. Uh, more fabric under here. These are a couple of Martha Stewart cabinets and um, they came in handy. I have two of these. One is in the closet over there and this one here. These are foundation papers which store easily on the shelf. More landscape fabrics for landscape quilts. So those are easy to pull out when I need them. Um, these bins here came from Hobby Lobby and they house collections of fabrics and I just labeled them with my P-Touch labeler so that I know um, if I want a certain collection I just pull it 
and under here was enough uh, space for me to tuck this tray. These are some fabrics that I'm working on a slow stitch project, so I pull from those fabrics for that project. And the tray in the bottom I use for current projects. Again, if I'm cutting small pieces and need to put them in something to contain them, uh, that's handy. And then these drawers are just things that I use all the time. Scotch tape. This is where I keep um, broken needles uh, or bent needles going here. This is just a pill bottle that I covered with ultra suede fabric. And so just things that are handy that I need. Notebooks, things like that. Little batting squares. Um, and down here are my... Um, graph paper pads. I keep them on these um, cardboard sheets that I can pull out. And these are, this was a design for a table runner, but all of my different um, graph paper pads are in here for drawing. So that comes in handy. Keep two bottles of water right by my iron <laughs> so that I can fill it up when necessary. And um, so that is my cutting table. And at the end of my cutting table is a cabinet that uh, it's a little like a dresser drawer unit. And um, on this, I just did a crackle finish and I used vintage spools of thread for the pulls. And I just put a screw and a little um, washer on them and those are nice this this these drawers hold different things that i use often again glue sticks my derwent watercolor pencils but all it's all very handy there right at the end of my cutting table coming around this way uh, this little cabinet i have more thread storage here again labeled the colors. I tried to put cool colors over here and warmer colors over there. Although this is a warm color. <laughs> and these are two, two units stacked one on top of the other. Same thing with the other one. They're two units. And um, jewelry, you can buy them on um, jewelry little containers. You can buy them on Amazon. Very handy. And here I keep my zippers and packing tape which is very handy and down here some more pretty storage for things like squares um, certain collections love is by Hannah Dale some of Joanne Figueroa's things and quilt squares so that's that little cabinet there that comes in handy and over here is my design wall and on the other side of the cutting table is a um, bookcase with my quilting books. And over here are some art bins that I use to store K-facet fabrics. And um, here is a basket that I use. Oops, sorry again. Here's a basket that I use. This, These are the fabrics that I pulled for my son's landscape quilt that's on the wall and um, leaves, stones, um, fabric that I can use for trees. So that comes in handy. This is a, um, a little piece of uh, Pasacalia quilt that I have been working on. This is a paper piecing pattern. I don't paper piece my, um, or hand piece my paper piecing patterns. I join them all with a very tiny, tiny, tiny zigzag stitch. I don't know if you can see that or not. Really can't tell that they're not hand sewn. They're all zigzagged together with a clear monofilament. And um, the papers are still in, of course, on the edges. But it's really fun to fussy cut all these shapes. And... Um, really pretty pattern. You'd need a lifetime to finish that. I don't I don't know when I'll ever finish that. 
<laughs> Here is my armoire. And up there are some Mary Englebright teapots, my children, one of my pin cushions. That pink flower is a glass lamp from France that my father brought back from World War II to my mom. That little box I made for keeping uh, sewing notions in when I'm doing hand sewing. Some little mice from Cinderella. And, um, and in here I just keep things like beads and buttons. My P-Touch labeler, glues, um, paper cutters, all the things that are handy uh, to have around you. I'll come back around here and show you the design wall. Here's the design wall. That's about five feet, I would say, by six. And there's my son's quilt. And of the quilt, it's a Noah's Ark, going to be for the new little grandbaby. And um, so that's very handy. I love that. And over here, opposite of my sewing machine, is this map chest. Here's a map chest. And I use this for my large designs, anything, um, big pieces of paper. Um, so I'll come around and show you that. I took advantage of this closet space here as well. Took the um, doors off. I'll see if I can open one of these drawers. You really need two hands to open these drawers. Um, but these hold my larger designs. Anything that's drawn on a, a very large piece of paper. Um, these are the appliques. This is for a quilt called Balan K, um, but just very big. Um, anything where I need to put big sheets of paper in here. And then I have drawers for rulers and, oh, just lots of things, graph paper, fusibles. So this map chest comes in handy. A little antique thread caddy with scissors and again using um, pretty boxes to store things this is my punch needle designs nothing in that one yet my pretty little vintage looking lamp it's not real vintage it's just a reproduction and um, again another pretty container fanny farmer box that had candy for my ribbons um, these boxes here, this box holds my oak shot fabrics. Uh, those are beautiful. They're only made in England. And they have uh, the threads of a, the warp are one color, the weft are another, so you get a shine to the fabric, a sheen that's beautiful. Um, and here are some wool threads. Again, my little mice from Cinderella. Um, this box is a Lori Holt quilt uh, of the pin cushions, so that holds that. And um, this box has some um, pieces of a Miss Lucy's cottage quilt number two. So there's some applique shapes in there. This box holds die cuts for paper collage art. And um, I just love this teapot, this tea, <laughs> this uh, sugar bowl and creamer. They were silver, but look at the gorgeous color that they've turned. I don't know if you can see how beautiful they are. This is a pin cushion that my daughter made for me, flower pin cushion that I keep in there. My printer and various little boxes for storing things, ink cartridges and different things. Up here is a uh, what looks like a picture frame, but it is actually a little cabinet that stores my thimbles in. And um, these have been bought for me by different people. These thimbles here 
are from my husband, and those are made by an artist, a local artist. And um, he bought me many of those. Some of the little figures on top are from my childhood, the Disney, um, Geppetto, Pinocchio, the Seven Dwarves. This was something my dad bought me in Vermont, those little people. Um, but this is one of my thimble storage boxes. I don't have the other one up. I don't have a lot of wall space. So, um, and this is a picture drawn by James Brown. I love a lot of his artwork. Really beautiful. And um, so these boxes, again, storing good things. And up here in that basket with the little quilt holds my wool rovings for pin cushions. And this is a quilt that I've designed for my mother and pulled those fabrics. The drawing for that quilt is um, upstairs on the design wall upstairs. So um, I don't want to keep too many designs here. And I'm just remembering that I forgot to show uh, these boxes down here, these beautiful boxes, again, storing pretty things. This is a fabric collection by J. Wecker Frisch. And this, whoop, this box holds threads that are not 50 weight, that are larger and smaller. <clears throat> this chest in the bottom, I'll just pick up this box, put it back. This chest, this black and white chest in the bottom holds vintage linens and laces. And I love that. That comes in handy. And one other storage area that I forgot to mention is over here. And this is uh, right next to my sewing machine. And this just, these are drawers. This is a drawer unit that keeps things for me that are just handy for me to get at. More threads down here. These are very fine threads, Invisafil, 80 weight threads. Um, some of the chunkier 12 weight threads there as well. And some graph paper and drawing down at the bottom. And um, those containers also down there at the very bottom, they house, uh, house collections of different fabrics. So that, that is my sewing quilting studio. And uh, this little caddy also comes in handy on my sewing table and I chose the clear acrylic just because again not wanting the eye to be too distracted because there's so much in here I didn't want it to distract so this is a little creamer that was my mom's probably from the 50s I'm guessing and my daughter bought me that little mouse pink and I keep in here my art glitter glue my Sue Daly glue my bulb pins, fray check stickles, fabric medium, um, some extra rotary blades. So this is just a nice little caddy to have handy. And it, again, it's not something that distracts the eye. Um, a journal here from my friend Jill to write in. And a little box that, um, this little box stores little tiny fabric. Uh, not fabric, but uh, paper pieces for collage art. I just couldn't put the box away. I thought it was so pretty. <laughs> Even though it's um, April, I have that still there because I love it. So this is my studio. And I'll just show quickly the lights, the lighting in here. My son Put the lights in for me and the lights in front of the window are on a separate switch and the lights in front of the closet 
can be off and you can just have the main light on the chandelier or that can go off or you can turn that just that on or all and um, I love that he also put the lights up in the ceiling here over in this space uh, to the left of my hutch so that is my sewing studio slash quilting studio and I thank you very much for joining me today and I wish you many blessings. I hope that I've given you some ideas about storage and um, how to maybe make your space look calm and peaceful yet pretty and have everything easy to get at which makes playing in your room and your space so much more fun. So thanks again, wishing you many blessings and bye for now.